You're listening to the Mind Your Own Business podcast, aimed at helping photographers learn how to make the leap from amateur to pro. Hello and welcome to the Mind Your Own Business podcast, a joint effort brought to you by PhotoFocus and Skip Cohen University. This is Shamira Young and I am joined by my co-host Skip Cohen. Skip. Hey. How are you? I'm good, but it is a bone chilling 65 degrees in Florida today. So Stop it. It's about yeah. 15 well, here there you in go. Michigan. <laughs> no, I love I I love cold weather in Florida. Everybody whines oh. and we all put on flannel shirts, but we never take off our flip-flops. Oh my goodness. So, there you go. Hilarious. So, we have we have a very cool show today and I yes. can't think of a better guest to kick off the new year. Uh we've got Bert Benke in the house. Now, He's been a good buddy for a whole lot of years. And besides being a great photographer and educator, he's a past president and chairman of the board for PPA. He's founder of PPA Charities that was active for many years. And he's a good friend and buddy to so many people in the industry. Bert and his wife, Cindy, own Benke Photography in Frankfurt, Illinois. And they are both accomplished business owners, artists, educators. Uh, They're involved in a little of everything. So we're going to talk today about staying focused, rebuilding the business after a crazy two years, uh, probably get into the importance of education. And as always with this podcast, who knows what else will come up along the way. So Bert, buddy, welcome to Mind Your Own Business. This is the cue for your lips to move. Well, just mind your own business. What a great title, number one. <laughs> it's uh, something I can never do usually. But uh, hey, good to be with you, buddy. It's it's always a pleasure to spend time with you, Skip. You know well, that. I love catching up to you, and I'm really excited that we're actually going to catch up live at Imaging USA next week. So yeah. that's that's kind of fun too. Yeah, if if we can just find each other in the show, seems like sometimes we walk through those shows, and then the last day when we're just about done, oh yeah, you're here. <laughs> you know, I set a goal last year, and I stuck with it. Um, no, I'm sorry, it was actually two years ago, before the pandemic. <laughs> I can't believe time flies uh, when you're in the middle of a pandemic, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But I remember setting a, a goal for myself that I was going to stop going to shows. And then realizing after I was there, oh, my God, I missed this person. I didn't catch up to that person and just started making kind of a conscious effort. And then the pandemic hit and we all kind of went into the world of Zoom um, and phone calls. But that is one of the biggest, best things about about hitting any kind of conference and convention. And while social distancing is still an issue, boy, is it good to see people you haven't seen in a long time. It's the best. It's just, you know, just my life, my business and everything revolves around people. You know, as a portrait photographer, that's what I do. I deal with people and not being able to smell, feel and touch them, which sounds weird, but I think you all know what I mean. (laughs) Not having that physical presence just kind of throws you into a whole different frame of mind, doesn't it? Yep. And Zoom, I mean, we all recognize that we should have all bought stock in Zoom, but (laughs) uh Zoom meetings, it's it's fine, um, but we're all we're all tired of it. I'm tired of of people who you only see their nose and their eyes because their monitor's not set up right, or <laughs> their lighting is absolutely horrible, or when you're talking to somebody, you you forget you want to look at your camera at the top of your monitor, or you might have a Logitech camera right there in front. But I just I I just can't wait to just just simply make eye contact and whether it's an elbow bump or a bro hug, whatever it's going to be is going to be great. So whatever everybody's comfortable with it, it is awesome. And you know, those days of going on zoom and like that lawyer that made all the uh, social media that I'm not a cat, I'm not a cat. I'm a real person. We can get together. If you remember that one, it made the end of the year, one of the biggest hits and uh, kind of explains our whole zoom existence, doesn't it? You got it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And, you know, you mentioned, Bert, that you deal with people. And th- that is such a great way to describe the essence of what you do. I'm looking at your website and the work that the portfolio that you and Cindy have. It's so apparent that you all care about people and your clients. And and so I'm so looking forward to digging into the nuts and bolts of your business. But first, I want to start with our favorite first question for those listeners who may not know much about your background or about you. Um, can you briefly describe how you got started and involved in the photography industry? 
Oh, wow. I thought you were going to ask me my favorite color. That but, too. Uh, and it's red. <laughs> um, but how, how I got started, I grew up in the business. Our business is 66 years old this year. In 1950, well, it's 66. It's more than that. 1954. So it's going to be 68 this year. My parents started the business uh, just outside Chicago in Cicero, Illinois. And as the story goes, my dad got laid off his job. Mom was had a little baby at home, which was me. And dad loved photography. So he started taking photographs of people working for some other photographers. And mom would do the sales allegedly while I was underneath the counter while she was rocking me with her foot. She's trying to get people to buy pictures from them. And, uh, you know, fast forward to college. I went to college to be a business administration slash accounting major. And after four years of cutting it back to part time instead of just full time, I told them I wanted to go into family business. My mother cried. My father said, told you so. And that was in 1973. And I haven't looked back. It's the only job I've ever had besides some of the other things I do. But I've been a photographer full time since since then. And uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love what I do. Well, here's a total sidebar. Is Lindy's Chili still in Cicero? I believe it is. All right. There you go. There you go. I'm You've going, been there. I'm going back. I'm going back about 45 years. Oh, I had no idea that's that's where you started. Yep. My, my folks are both from Cicero, Illinois. They uh, we, we didn't move out to this area in Frankfurt area until I was five years old. So this is my hometown and this is all I know. But they are kids from Cicero, Illinois. Well, I'm, better, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm just curious. So what you studied in college, you said it was business and accounting. Yes. Did you say? Did yes. that? Did any of that carry over into your photography business? Absolutely. Uh, one of my biggest regrets is not getting my degree, not finishing the, the the schooling. I was so close. I was about three years in, and just you know, like everything else, and the passion went out, and I went this direction. But I use it every day. I I'm a photographer. I'm a creative. I do all that thing. But I know that if I don't have my business in order. I can't continue to do that. I can't supply for my family, for myself. And uh, it, running a running a business is pretty important to me, and I want to make sure it sticks around. Like I said, my folks owned it for almost 30 years, and I've had it for a little longer than that now. And my son is kind of into business, but we're not sure he's going to stick around in it. So I might be the last one of the family, but until I decide to not do it anymore, I want to make sure it's a viable business. Well, one of the reasons that it is still a viable business is the fact that you are very, very active. And maybe that's a good segue into looking at what you've done to stay in business at a time where the last two years for so many artists has just gone upside down. Um, although it's very cool because um, I've got a program that I'm doing at Imaging USA next week. And the whole topic is about staying focused and not listening to the politics and the news and concentrating on things you can do to keep building your business. And my guests uh, on the panel, um, we've lost a couple of them for other issues, non-COVID, um, but the whole, the whole background in terms of their businesses is that they're all having good years. Um, and last year was a very strong year uh, for their business. So Let's talk about things that you and Cindy did to keep your sanity in terms of your business. Your, forget your regular sanity. I, I've known you too long, and that, <laughs> you lost that years ago. And that's a compliment, too. Um, what kind of things have you guys been doing to stay focused on, on things you need to do for your clients? Well, you know, I, I guess, you know, you know, go back to March of 2020, the day we did a wedding down in Cancun, Mexico. And the day we were flying home was the day they were closing the borders and everything like that. So we were like, we take off, we go down to Cancun for five days, we have a great time, we come back, and COVID has taken over the whole world, pretty much. And uh, for the next almost three months, we kind of sat around not knowing what to do. We said, well, well, let's take advantage of this time to reinvent our business, work on our systems, get caught up on everything. But, you know, like a lot of us, I think half of my time was spent on Zoom meetings and going to the liquor store, quite honestly. I mean, it was <laughs> like it became everybody's pastime, right? I should have bought mm -hmm. stock in scotch then. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we, we just really kind of decompressed, and I think it changed 
I know it changed our outlook. We we looked at things a lot differently. That that we didn't want to uh, face every day thinking we have to to hit the grind and not enjoy life. Skip knows Skip know me for what forty years, Skip. And, That's about uh, that. I I enjoy life. I'll be the first one to tell you I enjoy life. My wife enjoys life very much so, but I am the one that is always like my family comes first. If I'm enjoying my family, if I'm enjoying my friends. Life is good. If business is going well, it's a big bonus. But, you know, on the flip side of that, I also know that I have to concentrate on the business end of it. So we, we took advantage of that time to to uh, work on our studio, to up to spruce it up a little bit, make it look a little differently, give it a fresh look. We spent time reaching out to our clients. And, you know, in the beginning, we thought about how do we promote to get business in? How do we promote to get business in? And, and the realization was that Everybody was in the same boat. Everybody was sitting home and there wasn't a lot of income coming in. And I, we felt a little guilty asking them to come in and have portraits done when maybe they were more worried about, can they feed the family? Um, and so we kind of took a different approach. We kind of tried to just reach out to them and check in. We checked in on our customers. How's it going? What's new? We just want to let you know, you know, we're not, you know, we're not open right now because of COVID, but but uh, if there's anything you need or anything, we are here. Just call us if you need anything from your images to me to come help you shovel out your driveway. Um, we just wanted to make sure they knew we cared about them. And I think that's kind of our business principle is that we do care about our customers. We want them to to be friends, but mostly to be those that appreciate what we do. And uh, we just spent a lot of time on keeping the lines of communication open. So I, I don't know if you, we, we've changed about six years ago. We went from a, a home studio. We built our dream studio and it was a lot large outdoor, two acres, all wooded, you know, everything mm-hmm. like, like that to a storefront studio in my hometown that is 800 square feet. And in this 800 square feet, and I don't know if I mentioned it was on two acres, but it was 6,200 square feet between studio and home. And we mm-hmm. changed to an 800 square foot storefront location on the best corner of town with windows on one and a half sides of, of uh, the sidewalk. And um, that's how we communicated with people. We changed samples constantly. We put messages, cute little messages in the window for them uh, while we couldn't necessarily hug them. When we saw them outside, I'd open a door and talk to them from a distance and just tried to, to keep my mind from going into that funk of, geez, there's no business. I just wanted to make sure people knew we were still here. And I think that's just important in life all the time that um, – that you always make sure people know you're around. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that you made it a priority to show your clients how much you care about them. And I think that's all that was that's all we all really need. But it was so important while while we were locked down and just this lack of human contact that so many people struggled with. And so, I mean, I love that you found little ways to, you know, to let your clients know that you're thinking about them. And so fast forward to today and during Mm -hmm. a typical photo session in your studio, I guess, what measures are you taking to put your clients at ease? Um, Masking all the time, you know, Mm -hmm. obviously cleaning, wiping everything down after people are in, Um, you know, half of our customers want us to be very cautious and half of our customers say it's no big deal. So we have to kind of, play off of that but we let them know that we are going to be masked because that's what we're comfortable with mm-hmm. um but but and i, and I got to respect all of them I, I put a thing up on facebook just yesterday i think about we may disagree on different things but i just want people to know i still care about them even if we mm-hmm. may not agree on the the pandemic or politics or religion whatever it might be um i, I still want to be their friend heck isn't that what makes us all unique is we have differences of opinions and and that's kind of the fun of life, I think. Well, there's a great, I'm sorry, there's a great book out called Unmarketing that's gone into like, I don't know, four different printings by Scott Stratton. And his subtitle is Stop Marketing and Start Engaging. And he talks repeatedly in the book about your greatest marketing tool is relationship building. And I remember early on uh, through the pandemic, I think we had Jen Rosenbaum on as a guest. And Jen talked about how sometimes she might just call a client to see how they're doing. Now, she's in New York. She's in a highly populated area. She's also in an area that was a complete mess, uh, one of the worst in the country at different points during the pandemic. And she would just call a client to find out how they were doing. Is there anything they needed? Hey, I'm going to the store. Um, Can I pick anything up for you? It was Mm -hmm. just a matter of 
being a part, reminding people that you're a part of the community, just like they are. And, and you're exactly right. Community is what it's all about. I mean, I would go on Facebook. I'd scour Facebook for people that, you know, I have my friends that I come out, comment on different things. But when I saw my clients putting pictures up of their kids, I would comment on it and say, oh, so good to see you guys. And, you know, the thing that came back to me mostly during all this is, you know, the, the, the biggest issue with our studio was we do family portraits. We're pretty much that's our biggest line in our business is family portraits and especially multi-generational family portraits. And what happened during the pandemic? We were told, stay away from your grandparents. Don't get them sick. Keep the kids and the grandparents apart because we don't want to have any problems. And so what does that do to my extended family portraits from doing most of our business that way? And in 2019, we did none. In 2020, we did no extended families. Later in the year, we did some uh, you know, basic families, nuclear families, which is mom and dad to kids, but not one were grandparents included in them. And it, it hurt me to see them not getting together, but then I would comment on their pictures or their posts on Facebook. And overwhelmingly they would say, we can't wait till we can get back in with our grandkids and come see you and get a portrait done. So it said to me that the relationships that I have with them and the relationships they have with their family are the most important things to most people. Well, it's interesting because a mutual friend of ours, Kay Eskridge, is, was, was supposed to be on the panel discussion at this upcoming program I'm doing, mm -hmm. and she pulled out, um, she called me Sunday to say she just can't be there. Now, she doesn't care in terms of her health. She's had her vaccine. She's all set to go. She wanted to be at the convention in the worst way, but Kay is the caregiver for two elderly parents. Her dad has got dementia more advanced than her mom. And she said, here's my issue. If I come back with anything that doesn't, I'm not worried about my health, but I can't give it to them. So if she's got to hunker down and go into quarantine, or if she thinks she's fine and were to go visit them, they're in a, a, a senior living center. She runs the risk of passing it on to everybody else. And that is, I mean, that's kind of the new way of life for the moment that we're all sitting here doing a countdown, waiting for it to, uh, Oh, be in the shadows instead of the spotlight. Mm. So, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I know Kay, and I've watched her whole story unfold, and I've talked to her, and and uh, she's she's doing what's best for herself and her family. And, and how can you say that's not a great thing? You can't. That's you can't. That's exactly what the issue is, the challenge is. But in the same respect, let's switch gears for a second. And you and I both have been involved in a lot of programs that support education. Um, it sure. was a key part when you were president of PPA. In fact, everything that you've ever done um, at every convention has always been involved in some level of education. Throw a few words of wisdom out there for to remind people that you, this is one of those career fields where you can never slow down. You never stop learning, whether it's new technology or just becoming more diverse in your skill set. Well, I mean, you're exactly right. It's like, I don't know, it's our profession is no different than any other profession. We've got to grow with it. We have to change with it. Um, I mentioned I was in the accounting program back when I was in the university. And, you know, what we used back then, we used ledger sheets and we wrote in there in all the different columns and we totaled them up with a calculator and we did all that. And right now, if I was an accountant and doing that, I probably wouldn't get much business. People look at me and go, what? You know, where's the computer? Things had to change in my business. Styles have changed. You know, I have friends that if you looked at their work, it might look a lot like it did in 1975. And while they may still have some clients that like that look, those people are starting to get fewer and fewer uh, around just from attrition. And we're always trying to change our style. My, my wife is, I'm her biggest fan as a photographer. She's always looking at other people's work and trying to emulate it, but put her own spin on it. And she does a lot of maternity photography and I'm just in awe of what she does of it. And um, a few years back, a good story on that, a few years back, I didn't realize that I was actually still learning. I figured oh, I'm a photographer. I know everything. I was teaching at a thing called After Dark. And Dave Junior, the mastermind of After Dark, at the end of one of the, the workshop said, next time any of you that are coming back, you're going to, have to do something completely different. You're not going to do the same family group posing or couples or anything like that. I want you to do something different. So sarcastically, I said, hey, Dave, maybe I'll do a maternity shoot like my wife does. 
And he looked at me and he says, that's what you're exactly doing next time you're going to teach a maternity class. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, the next time it comes up, he, he had me do a maternity class. And I did, I taught an hour and a half class on maternity photography because I had learned it from watching. I had evolved my myself, my style. And you know, the first maternity session I ever did was the one I taught. It was the very first one I ever did by myself. And it just made a, it made an impact on me that, yes, that's, you got to just keep learning. You got to find something new. Not only does it help you creatively, it helps service your clients. It's great for business. And you can tell everybody you're still learning. I mean, you know, a doctor that doesn't know how to do current surgery probably isn't going to stick around a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And that's well. Go ahead, you know, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I think about I'm rambling. I think about so many photographers that we've all met who will sit there and say, uh, I'm a natural light specialist. And we all know what that means. It means they're afraid mm -hmm. of studio lighting. We all love natural light. And sure. even better is when you can make your studio lighting look like natural lighting. But that to me is the equivalent of if you were going to the doctor and he gave you a stick to bite on because he's gonna re he's gonna reset <laughs> The, the knee you blew out. <laughs> oh, you know my doctor. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there it is. All right, I want you to bite down on this stick because this is going to hurt. Um, it, it's just the diversity you need to have. And I, I think, I don't think they're gone, but I think the days of just being able to be a pure specialist are reserved for a very, very small percentage of the industry. And I think it's really important that everybody's skill set be as diverse as possible. If you're a wedding photographer, for example, why not be there to do the maternity shoot? If you were going to do, if you can do the maternity shoot, then why not be there to sh do some baby photographies and infants and have it roll into family? Or if you really hate it and you just know it's something you don't want to do, then at least have a friend so that when a client says to you, "Hey, we're going to have a baby. Will you photograph? Will you, will you photograph us in the process?" Um, if you can't do it, you've got somebody to refer to. And you're never saying to a client, oh, no, you know, I don't do that. You, d you don't just cast them adrift and let them float out there. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, I do that all the time. And people ask me to do certain things. If it's not something I think I can do well, because I want to make sure whatever I do, I do well for them. I'll tell them I'll find somebody who does it really well. You know, I, I have so many friends in this industry. If I, Jen Rosenbaum, you mentioned her. If I knew somebody needing a boudoir in New York City. Who would I send it to? Of course, her. If I wanted to, somebody to photograph tweens, we'd send it to Kay Eskridge, Eskridge out in Phoenix area. There are so many different opportunities to service your clients that don't always necessarily mean you have to do the work. And uh, I think that's part of running a successful business is, is always taking, giving them the best opportunity to get the best product they want. Absolutely. You know, Bert, one thing that I'm curious about how is it working with Cindy? You two are the dynamic duo. Do you each have your own special roles in the business? Do you take on certain things or how do you two make that work? I hate it. Who would want to work with their wife? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We actually have lots of friends that are couples like this. And just in the last two days, I've been on the phone call a lot with Michael Taylor, who him and he and his fiance Monica Sigmund are out in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, and they work together 24-7. Uh, Elizabeth and Trey Holman are in San Antonio, Texas. They work with each other 24-7. We compare notes all the time. But I think the important part is we, you find your own lane, as to, to quote the, the words now. I am the people person at the studio. I spend a lot of time communicating with the people. Cindy does all the back-end work. She loves to bury herself in the computer and work on the images and work on the images and work on the images because that's almost her therapy. Where we come together is in the camera room. Um, I mostly, I, I do a lot of the family portraits. I do uh, executives, any of the corporate work we do, any of the, like, we don't do a lot of activity or event type work, but if that's it, that's my lead. She leads on anything that has to do with photography of, of women, um, children, babies, things like that. And I mentioned the maternity. She does all that. Mm -hmm. Headshots, we kind of both work on that. But it's really interesting when we do work together, we have found that only one of us can be the lead dog. <laughs> if, if you've ever done that, and she's a terrible, terrible, 
terrible assistant. She will hear this and look at me when she hears this <laughs> podcast, but she knows that she is, she, she likes to be in control of the photography sessions and she's really good at it. So I've learned that when we're working together, I usually take the back seat and work on the technical side of things unless she gets stuck with something. If she's having a bad, if uh, like she doesn't communicate with guys, young guys as well as I do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She just doesn't, she's a really girly girl communicator. <laughs> and, uh, and so I might step in and take over that. But, you know, usually we try to stay in our own lanes. Like I said, the type of work we're doing, we do it. And, um, but we also both know that we can both do what the other one does. We can both do executive portraits. We can both do maternity, but we try to steer our clients to what it is that we do best and most like the maternity or the executives. Um, I, you know, I don't know if that's, gives you a complete answer, but we, we kind of try yeah. to use our, our best skills each way and pretty much stay out of each other's way. Like right now I'm in my studio working with you guys and Cindy's working, but she's working in her home office because I think there's a certain amount of time we need to be away from each other. Cause when we go home 24 seven can get a little bit interesting sometimes. <laughs> It's a delicate balance, I'm sure. It is. Right. It is. Yeah. But I but I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. We just we we have fun and if if we ever get a little bit testy with each other during the day and she hates when I do it, I'll just look at her and I'll grab her and I'll make her dance. <laughs> and she and she has this stiff body. If you ever do that with some she has this stiff body and she's so mad at me and within fifteen seconds she's just laughing, telling me I'm an idiot. But you know oh, what? It works great. for us. That's it so works. Great. I love it. Oh, being being an idiot, I can identify with that. Being an idiot is is <laughs> is an asset. It's it's definitely not a liability, and and I think that's what I saw. It's what I'm still seeing now to a point is photographers that I don't want to say they're taking it too seriously because there's no such thing when it's your business, but they're spending so much time looking at the, well, here's the analogy of the week, the thorns on the rose that they're forgetting to smell the rose. And, sure. and it's, it's like, come on, everybody has a tough challenge right now, but there are also so many unique opportunities um, that you can be unique, that you can be involved in your community, that people can get to know you as somebody who's giving back as opposed to just another realtor. A realtor? A retailer. <laughs> How about realtor, too? There you go. You can sure. sell houses. Sure. No, retailer. Everybody, this is what happens when you get older. The, the words just don't flow. You spend 20 bucks on a haircut, and then the mouth doesn't work. <laughs> so um, it, to change gears again, you and Cindy both teach a lot, and I know you've got something coming up, and we're just about out of time, too. Um, okay. I know you've got something coming up in Michigan. Where are you guys teaching over the next few months? Uh, it's just outside of Detroit, and I... I I'm sorry I don't get the I don't know the exact town, but uh, the professional photographers from Michigan have asked us to come do programs for them the first weekend in March, and um, I'm doing my program on family portraits, and kind of that's what I'm known for is being able to put together family portraits from three people up to our largest one a couple of years ago was 86 people. Whoa! It's unusual to go Ooh. that big, but. But, but we did. But, you know, how to make sure everybody has a has a space, both vertically, horizontally, you get to see everybody. I kind of explain family portraits as they're individual portraits that have to fit together so everybody looks good as one. And so I teach on that. And Cindy's going to be doing her program on maternity photography and how she works anywhere from posing to draping people to this. You know, this, we'll talk about sales, too, because it's important that we communicate whatever it is we do to, to keep a successful business going. You know, I, I don't want anybody to think that just because they know photography that people are going to flock to them because they take great pictures. Guys, it doesn't work that way. You, you, you have to do everything involved in a business, you know, beside being the, at the top of your craft, you have to be at the top of your business too, to make sure people know that you're there and want your product. Um, and so we're doing that. And then we do workshops every year. I mentioned the Homans earlier out of San Antonio. We take groups, overseas every year. Well, of course, we haven't done that for two years. But in June, end of June, early July, we're going to Scotland with a group of photographers. And we, it, it's more, it's actually more fun and experience than it is photography education. But we always, you know, photograph everybody there, talk to them about how we, how we work with people and just basically share a network. And I think, 
know, if I could say one thing about everything in my associations and going back with Skip and everybody all my life, it's the networking that's really given me the education that I've needed to succeed in my business. It's the networking at conventions. It's the networking at local meetups. It's it's all that type of stuff. And everything we, we do is based off of our love of people and our love of being able to communicate with them. Yeah, in fact, you hit on a point a few minutes ago about about love of people and communicating. For anybody that's relatively new in this industry, keep in mind that it really is a community. And when you connect with a couple of, of people that have been around, and let's just say five years or more, even though Bert and I top that by <laughs> a few yeah. decades. Um, I mean, you mentioned Michael Taylor and Monica a few minutes ago. Um, they're going to be at Imaging USA. I caught up to Michael online one day after he got, is it his, his fifth knee? Was that? So, yeah, I thought people had two, but he has multiples. Yeah, he's had he's he's had a couple of knee replacements, and he was just getting back on his feet. The point is that as a community, we all know each other. We've all been to the same rubber chicken dinners together. We've all been stuck in at conventions. In fact, I'm thinking about Imaging USA, and I'm going back to Imaging USA in San Antonio when there was a nice storm and nobody could get out. Yeah. I mean, we were all stuck I for another that. one or two days. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it just it it's part of the fun of this industry. So as you come into it, and if you've only been in it a few years, you're going to find that part of the reason you want to be at conventions and conferences is to keep building that network and creating those those memories. And you just never know when somebody that you met on an elevator, you know, at a convention, um, suddenly becomes your go-to. Uh, person because I don't know you just dropped a lens and they happen to be in your community and you need some help on a project or something and that's that's to me one of the things that makes this industry just so terrific absolutely just, um, most of my best friends I met by happenstance at some convention in the industry and you know what you might have been sharing a drink you might have been sitting next to him in a program or you might have been riding the shuttle bus from the, the airport that's how you make the connections. You know, don't be afraid to talk to people. Don't be afraid to talk. If you're going to Imaging USA, don't be afraid to come up to Skip Cohen and ask him a question or say hi because you're a nobody. Nobody is a nobody. I don't know if that makes right. any sense. That's a it double does. negative. I like but, that. you know, it works. take the opportunity to reach out. If you're a portrait photographer, gosh, I hope you're a people person because that's who you're working with all the time. So, you know, you know, stretch yourself. Make sure you introduce yourself, even if it's just to say hi. I think you'll find that you make lifelong relationships just if you take the initiative to, to just say a simple hi. Absolutely. Wow. I, it's already, we're coming up on the end of our time. Like Skip mentioned, these always go way too fast. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you gave such great points. And I love your positivity, by the way. I think that everybody needs a big dose of positivity these days. And it's obviously working for you and Cindy and your whole business and we just appreciate you chatting with us and i do want to make sure and sneak in our favorite final question bert uh -oh. do you i know right the pressure's on oh no <laughs> what advice do you have for photographers who new photographers who are just getting started today during these interesting times what direction would you point them in first I, th I think it's a, I mentioned earlier, it's a people business. If you're mm -hmm. in, a, in, in, in my specialty of portrait photography, it's a people business. Make sure you like people, but learn your craft. Learn how to make sure that your lighting is correct. Learn how to pose properly. Learn all those things. And I highly, highly encourage you to learn it live. I mean, you can look at Facebook and you can go on YouTube and watch certain things, but if you're actually doing it, it's a whole different whole different animal when you're actually able to do it in person you know go to these conventions and learn from the people that do it all the time and get so good at that and keep practicing it and bring your wife in and bring your husband you know bring them in and practice on them practice on your kids because what you want to do if you really want to stay in this business a long time make that the least important thing you do when you go to do a session with a person make it second nature to yourself do most of your concentration at least for me what I found to be most successful, when I go into a portrait session, I know how to light, I know how to pose, I know that. My job is to interact with the client, to talk to them, to put them at ease, and make them feel comfortable because they don't care what's on. 
they don't care what to look at the back of my camera. I don't let people look at the back of my camera. They have confidence in me because they see my confidence exuding in, in my skill level being there. I want to know about them. I want to deal with them. I want to make sure it's about them. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. You know, that's such a great point because working with clients personally, I've experienced that they tend to reflect my level of confidence. And sure. it's it's so true. If you're nervous, you will make them nervous, <laughs> even if you don't mean to. And when you're confident and happy, and in my case, when I get giddy during a portrait shoot, they get giddy. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, everyone gets into it. And it's just, it's a great time. Yeah, you, you dictate the, the mood and they'll play right into it. And if they feel good, they're going to be a good customer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, and Bert, I want to make sure and ask, where can folks check out your work online? Uh, it'd be on the World Wide Web at BenkeyPhoto.com. It's just like it sounds, except for nobody can spell it. So it's B-E-H-N-K-E-P-H-O-T-O.com. Perfect. We'll make sure to include that in the show notes, a direct okay. link. <laughs> yeah. And feel, you know what, anybody in the industry, feel free to reach out to me. I'm an open book. I love helping people in this business. It's what I do. Excellent. Excellent. And Skip, where can folks find you online? It's always the same answer. Everything I write is at skipcohenuniversity.com. I'm Skip Cohen on Facebook. I'm Skip Cohen on Twitter. And just to remind everybody, this is either year number eight or year number nine for the Mind Your Own Business podcast. And we couldn't do it without feedback and input from you. So if there are topics or photographers or artists or anybody that you wish we'd have on as a guest, give us a shout. My email is skip at mei500.com. And I always ask you the same question, Shamira. Where do they go to find you? Folks can send me an email at shamira at photofocus.com. That's my first name, C-H-A-M-I-R-A, at photofocus.com. And uh, like Skip mentioned, we love getting questions, ideas, feedback as we move into 2022. Wait a minute, we're already in 2022. What is that? So, you know, it's been such a kick um, doing this podcast. And we're looking forward to the amazing guests that we're going to have on this year. And and speaking of amazing, Bert, thank you again. Great stuff, This was buddy. awesome. Oh, thank you, guys. Really good I, stuff. I love spending time with you. Shamira, I hope I get to meet you in person one of these days. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's inevitable how small the industry is. <laughs> it is. It really is. <laughs> Uh, and we want to thank our listeners for joining us as well. Please tell your friends about this podcast, especially if they have the burning desire to improve their photography business in 2022. We look forward to having you with us next time on the Mind Your Own Business podcast, brought to you by Photo Focus and Skip Cohen University. 